Hey, what's up class? Welcome back. Another episode of Math One Distance Learning. Mr. Mason, room 1809, John Glenn High School. Hope you guys are doing well, hanging in there. Okay, so we are in the middle of a unit on linear equations. And we have uh, started looking at word problems and we have started writing equations. We call those functions for those word problems. And most recently, we've started looking at slope. Now, I just want to remind you that when, we call, when we're looking at a word problem, we call it a rate, right? Like $5 per hour or three chocolate chip cookies per day. So that's a rate. But as soon as we turn it into a math calculation and we put it on a graph, now we call it a slope. So it's the same thing. A rate is a slope. So today we're going to explore this a little bit further and we're going to be um, identifying the slope in word problems and identifying slope in graphs and in equations. So let's go ahead and get started. You should have the notes in front of you. It's called identifying the slope in linear equations. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and flip over to the docucam and here we go. All right, so you should have notes that look something like this. So our objective for today is to identify the slope of a linear equation. And we want to do that both in word problems as well as in mathematical equations, okay, in a mathematical equation. All right, so there's our objective. Okay, so a quick review. Um, a rate, when we talk about a rate, a rate is a ratio comparing two quantities or categories, right? And often we see the word per used in word problems. So when we see the word per, this is indicating to us that there's probably a rate involved, right? So for example, um, $50 per hour. Let's say that, um, that you are doing a job and you're gonna charge $50 per hour for your services, right? So we would write that 50 over one. So $50 per every one hour, right? So 50 over one. Um, here's another example. We might say we are driving 70 miles per hour. So 70 miles, per every one hour. So this is saying we're going to travel 70 miles every one hour. And this is how we measure speed. Okay, so those are a couple examples of rate. Now slope is a mathematical term for the steepness of a line. We've already learned this, right? So this is a, this is the way we measure how steep a line is, right? And it's usually expressed as a ratio of the rise over the run. So again, a ratio up here, a rate is a ratio comparing two quantities and a slope is a ratio of the rise over the run. We're comparing two quantities, the rise per the run, okay? All right, so here's, um, here are a couple examples. Um, let's say that I give you a slope of three over four, three over four. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and graph that. We'll start right at, uh, the center of the graph. So we don't always start at the center, but for our examples here, we'll start right at the origin. And so if I wanted to graph a line going through the origin, I would travel up three, right? So we talked about getting in the elevator and going up three. So one, two, three, and then getting out of the elevator and running four blocks, one, two, three, four. So up three over four. Now you could work your way backwards. You could go in reverse. So if I went up three and over four to the right four, I could go in reverse and I could go down three and to the left four, and that gives us our line. So if I was to start here and go up one, two, three, over one, two, three, four, up one, two, three, over one, two, three, four. Okay, so that would be our slope. Um, and we'd call it a slope because we're looking at 
a line, okay? We're looking at a graph. All right, let's try another one. Let's say that we have a slope of negative five over two. So negative would be the rise, but since it's negative, we actually wanna travel downward. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here. And if I start right at the origin, if I want to travel, if I want to show this slope, starting at the origin, I'd go down one, two, three, four, five, and then run to the right too. Normally we always run to the right. So like over here, we went up three and we ran, we run to the right. So here I'm gonna go down five and then run to the right. Now you could go backwards, but it's like driving a car. You've gotta be good at driving the car forward before you think about driving the car in reverse. So if you don't feel real comfortable about either going up into the right or down into the right, then I wouldn't think about going backwards yet. But for those of you that are feeling pretty good about it, going in reverse, if I went down five into the right, reverse would be going up five and then to the left two. So up one, two, three, four, five, and then to the uh, up five and to the left two. Okay, and then I can get from this point to this point by going down five, one, two, three, four, five, and over two. Okay, so that's looking at a graph, taking a slope and then showing it in a graph. Okay, now I just mentioned this a moment ago at the beginning of this video, I said rate and slope are two words that mean the same thing. They, they are identical. They're like nicknames for one another, okay? Um, they're interchangeable. If we're looking at a word problem, we call it a rate, okay? And if we are um, looking at a mathematical equation or a graph, then we call it a slope. Okay, they are interchangeable. They mean the same thing. We just happen to call it a slope here and a slope over here because we're not actually looking at a word problem. Okay, all right, let's move on to page two. Now in page two, we're going to look at a couple of word problems and we want to identify the rate so we're looking at word problems. So we want to identify the rate and then we want to write an equation to match the scenario. All right, so it says, Michelle has a part-time job babysitting. She has already earned $20 and she is saving $6 per week. How much savings will she have in four weeks? How much money will she have in one year? Okay. So here's the word problem. We're not gonna completely solve the word problem. All we wanna do is identify the rate and we wanna write an equation, okay? So it tells us she's already earned $20 and she's saved six, she is saving $6 per week. So you tell me or you think for a moment, what is the rate in this problem? What's the rate? Okay, so it's the $6 per week, right? We've got the word per per week, okay? So that's our rate. And then what's the upfront amount? What's the starting amount? Okay, it tells us that she's already, already, that means she already has it. She's already earned $20. So remember we wanna start, so if we're gonna write this in function notation, we would use F of X. And then this is our starting amount, our upfront amount and then we put the rate, we always put the rate in front of the X or next to the X. We always put our rate next to the X, okay? Now, um, as a review, our X variable, that represents what? What does our X variable represent? You remember, it starts with an I. This would be our input. And what's another name for the input? It'd be the independent variable, the independent variable. 
It's also going to be our domain. And then over here, this is our output, our dependent variable, and it's also our range, okay? All right, now we could write this um, same equation. Um, I could take this and I can interchange it with a Y. This is the same thing, F of X equals Y. And I can change those, uh, those spots, okay? So I can change those around and it still means the same thing, okay? All right, so our rate, we're identifying the rate the rate is $6 per week, but when we write it in an equation, our rate is right there, right? Correct? The rate goes right next to the X, okay? We always put the rate next to the X. All right, let's look at this other one over here. So it says, Peter is able to grill 20 hamburger patties every 30 minutes. He has already grilled 100 patties. How many patties will he have grilled after another hour and 10 minutes of grilling? Now, we're not solving the problem. We're just identifying the rate and we're writing an equation. Okay, so see if you can find the rate. The word per is not actually in there. So you have to think about where might it be. Okay, you have the rate. Okay, so our rate is 20 patties per every 30 minutes. So it says 20 hamburger patties every 30 minutes, per every 30 minutes, per 30 minutes. So he can grill 20 patties every 30 minutes. Now, we can rewrite that. Whoops, I didn't rewrite it. So we'll rewrite it in a moment. So what, what is our equation? So what's the upfront amount? What's the upfront amount? The amount he's already starting with, Peter. Peter has already grilled 100 patties, okay? So we can do F of X is equal to 100, that's our upfront amount, plus a rate of 20 over 30 X. Now, I can change this also. I can simplify that. You remember how to simplify, they both um, are divisible by 10, or I can just cancel out the zeros, right? So I can divide both by 10 or cancel out the zeros, and I can rewrite this so that instead of 20 over 30, I can reduce that or simplify it to 2 over 3x, and then here's my upfront amount. So I just reverse the order, I just changed places. They just change places and f of x, I change that to a y. So this is acceptable. This is acceptable. Okay, so we have a rate of two patties every three minutes. Two patties every three minutes or 20 patties every 30 minutes. Okay. All right, so here's a question for you. Where do we always put the rate when writing an equation, where do we always put the rate when writing an equation? We put the rate, the rate goes on the left side or before the X, okay? So if you notice, here's our rate. It was $6 per week, so we put our rate on the left side of the X. Here's your X, that's the left side. Over here, here's your X, that's on the left side. We put it before the X. It's gonna go right next to the X, right? So the rate gets multiplied times the X. Our X is our input variable, okay? So I'll give you a minute to copy that down. So when we're writing a function or writing an equation, right? Those mean the same thing. We always wanna take our rate, we always wanna take our rate and we wanna put it next to the X. Okay, so this is something that we've already learned. We've, we've spent a lot of weeks working on word problems. Okay, so we always wanna put our rate next to the X, rate next to the X, okay? All right, so now um, the next thing that you're gonna do is you are gonna write a scenario involving money, temperature, elevation. Okay, so your story can deal with money, 
temperature or elevation that includes a rate and matches this equation. Okay, so if you were sitting in class right now, I would have you pause the video or there would be no video if you're sitting in class and I would have you write your own story. You would write your own little word problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and break this down. So my first question is, out of the numbers that you see here, which one of those is the starting amount or the upfront amount? And that would be the 60, right? That would be the constant. It has no variable next to it. So this is our starting amount. And then which number is the rate? Which number is the rate? And that would be the number next to X, right? We just discussed it the rate goes next to the X. So this is our rate, this is our upfront amount. So now we need to come up with a story that matches this. And so I'm gonna do a story about temperature. So I said this, the temperature this morning, the temperature this morning was 60 degrees. That's my starting amount, right? The temperature this morning was 60 degrees right there. But as the sun rose, the temperature also rose five degrees per hour. Okay, so the temperature this morning was 60. It's our starting amount. But as the sun rose, the temperature also rose five degrees per hour. So per hour. So there's our rate right there. There's our rate, five degrees per hour. Okay, that is our rate. Okay, let's try another one. Once again, you can do it on your own or you can copy the one that I am going to provide you as an example. Write a scenario involving money, temperature or elevation that includes a rate. So we need a word problem that has a rate and it matches this equation right here. And there's the equation. So which of those numbers is the upfront amount? Which number is the upfront amount? And which one is the rate? Okay, so the upfront amount this time is 300. There's no variable next to it. And our rate is negative 10 per three. So negative 10 for every three of something, we don't know. Right, so we have to write a story. Okay, so I'm going to do a story about elevation. You could do a story on money. Okay, so I'm gonna do a story on elevation. I hiked, I hiked to an elevation of 300 feet. That's my starting amount. I hiked to an elevation of 300 feet, starting amount. And then I rope repelled, I rope repelled down the face of the mountain, right? Like Mission Impossible, I rope repelled down the face of the mountain, dropping 10 feet every three seconds. So I would drop 10 feet every three seconds, and I drop another 10 feet every three seconds, then another 10 feet. And that is our rate right there. Okay, so I hiked to an elevation of 300. It's my starting amount. And then this is a minus, so I'm dropping, right? So I decided to do elevation and I'm gonna drop, I'm dropping 10 feet every three seconds. So my rate is 10 feet every three seconds. Okay, so those are word problems. Okay, so we just, we started with two word problems that I gave you up here, Michelle and Peter, and then we wrote two word problems. We wrote two word, word problems right here. So I gave you an equation, we did a word problem, and then I gave you another equation, and did a word problem, okay? All right, so rate, is slope. So right now we've only been focusing on right now we've only been focusing on the 
great. Okay, so linear equations. Linear equations, what are they? So it's an equation, so a linear equation is an equation um, that it contains a rate. Okay, so there's a rate. If it's linear, it's gonna contain a rate. And it has an input and an output. Our input variable is our X and our output variable is our Y. We've also learned that this is called the dependent variable. And we've learned that the input, the input is called the independent, independent. Okay, so a linear equation has a rate. It's got an input and an output. We call this the independent and we call this the dependent. And when we graph it, it's gonna make a straight line. It's gonna make a straight line. And the reason it makes a straight line is because it has a constant rate. The rate is gonna stay constant. It's gonna, const it's gonna change at the same constant rate. Okay, so linear equations, they contain a rate. They've got an input, they've got an output, and then when we graph them, they make a straight line. Okay, now, linear equations come in two basic forms, two basic forms, okay? They come in one form that's called slope-intercept form, which I've began to introduce you to this phrase, slope-intercept form. And they also come in another form, which is called standard form, okay? All right, so I'm gonna pause the video right here, or I'm gonna stop this video. This will be part one. And then I will start a second video, which we will call part two, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this right here. And let me just say goodbye to you. And all right, we'll see you. We'll be right back for part two.